What's up everyone, in this video we're going to see how to deploy a secondary security management server so that we can have a high availability uh, deployment for the management server. I have deployed um, a scenario where we have a gateway, a single gateway and a single management server. And this server right now it's with IP uh, 192.168.1.101 and we want to deploy a secondary management server so that in case something happens on the primary uh, management server we have a standby management server now uh, different than the security gateway where we're able to have active and standby units with the management server we can only have one unit as active as the active one and the failover mechanism has to be uh, done manually uh, this is just some of the difference that i want to highlight uh, between high availability on the security gateway versus the management server so this is currently the management server we have deployed right now and you can see it's, um, it's running R81 and I have deployed a simple policy just allow, allowing uh, internal traffic uh, to go to any destination you can see here so I'm just allowing uh, my local network 192.168.1.0 to reach any destination on these services and then I have the cleanup rule. So this is working right now, so let's test this. You'll be able to reach, uh, this is a web server uh, that is sitting on network 192.168.2.1 that's on the outside interface of the gateway and this PC is able to reach uh the outside network okay so now to deploy the secondary management server uh, the installation process is similar to installing uh, a primary one so just installing guy operating system uh the difference uh or where we have to define that is going to be a standby management server will be during the first time configuration wizard so let me actually bring this back and let's go over to uh this measurement server 2 in this case that's going to be the standby so at this stage i only installed guy operating system and we're going to configure um or to complete the first time configuration wizard now so just going to press next going to continue the installation the details related to the ip on the interface going to leave it default here i'm just going to set the host name and it's going to be unique uh, this is the date and we want to select security gateway or management and we're going to disable security gateway and here we have to select secondary okay that's what's going to make this management server as a secondary one and i'm going to disable this one yes i want to continue now we have to set a uh, seek that's the secret key we're going to proceed and i want to disable this and finish so it's going to start or to complete the first time configuration wizard and after this is completed then we're going to add this management server as the secondary unit on smart console okay first time configuration wizard is finished and before adding this management server uh, we want to make sure that all the services are up and running so it's going to log on to this server 
and a tip that I often use is to check whether uh, CPM service is already running. So let's wait until we uh, reach the status that started and then we're going to proceed. Okay, the service is started now, so we can continue. So let me close this. And let's add uh, a new object. So we go to more network objects, gateways and servers, checkpoint host. And we'll type the name. So it's going to be SMS2, the IP address. 2.168.1.102 and here on management tab we're going to select network pulse management and then we're going to click on communication to establish seek and we're going to initialize the communication okay and it was established successfully we can see the trust state and we can close these and we can press OK and let's go to gateways and servers and we should have uh, the management server and let's publish these changes and it's going to start replication from management server 1 to management server 2 Now this process might take a while as this is the first synchronization between uh, both management servers. So once it's completed, we're going to continue. Okay, let's see the current status of this configuration. So let's look at management high availability. And we can see that right now we are connected to management 1 and it is the active one. And management 2 is on standby status. And we can actually connect to this server. And we're going to be presented with the fingerprint message. We're going to proceed. We can see the gateway, the management one and management two status. And one thing to notice is that uh, the management two uh, doesn't have connection with the gateway and we're going to take a look at this in a moment so let's just look at the policy so we should have the same policies that exist right now on management one so we just two rules and these are the rules so let's go to management two session and we can see the same rules okay okay now What's the problem with the gateway? Uh, so management server 2 can't reach the gateway. So if we take a look at the logs, we can see that this service is being dropped by the gateway. And there are different ways to solve this problem. So right now we can see that the management server is trying to reach the gateway on these services. So what I'm going to do is to install a new rule allowing this communication. So let's get security policy rules and let's add a new rule above. And let's say from SMS2 to gateway. And we're going to drag SMS2. And here, gateway. And you want to allow any service. And I'm going to accept this. And I'm going to install this and publish. You see, when we open uh, the standby session, we are only allowed to see the objects so let me install this we don't have right privilege on this session and we can see as soon as we publish the change 
it was replicated on the standby session as well. As I was saying, we don't have write permission on this session. All we can do is to read. So if we want to make any change, we can only do it on the on the active unit. Okay, this was installed. Now, if we look at the logs and monitor or gateways and servers, we should see the status to change in a minute. Okay, and we can see that management server 2 is able to reach a gateway now. Now, let's say we want to make management 2 to become the active uh, unit. We can initialize this process from the standby unit by going to actions and add to active or by going on the active unit and set it to standby. So it will work in either way. I'm just going to start this from the active unit. We're going to set to standby. And once that's completed, we're going to be disconnected from the server. Now we have to promote management two as the active one. So we go on SMS two actions that active, and we're going to press yes. So now it will begin the switch over process and we will have to log out and log in uh, again to have read and write permissions. We're going to press OK. We're going to close this and close this window. So let's try to log in. And here we're going to type uh, management two IP address. OK, we can see that management two right now is the active unit and management one is in standby status which means that we should be able to make changes on the smart console session now let's open the browser and see if we can capture the logs on this management server so let's go to logs and monitor and uh, let's update the logs and we don't find uh, the most recent logs. If we look at the log files, and this should be for SMS2. It still is not receiving any recent logs. This is because we have to add a measurement two as a destination log server on the gateways. Recall that the gateways they are the ones who send the logs to the management server. So here on the logs tab, we have to add the management server to. So we click on pass symbol and we select management to and we press OK. Now let's publish this change. And see if we start receiving the logs from the gateway. So let's refresh the page and refresh the logs as well. Okay, let's see if installing the policy will make any change. I don't want to install threat prevention. Just install. Okay, the installation is succeeded. So let's generate some traffic and check again. We're receiving the logs from the gateway and now we get it. If you enjoyed this one, let me know so I can make more content related to CCSC topics. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.